Welcome back. Let me get rid of a little bit of this music here. How's everybody doing today? This on the sim. Welcome back to the Indy Car Racing 2 season. 1989 season here for the Detroit Grand Prix. This one's going to be interesting. I think I got sorted out the audio issues I was having last time. So let me know how everything sounds. But I'm excited for this. This should be a good race today. Um, Detroit is always a difficult one. Why am I so dark? Let me brighten this up a little bit. Make sure you can actually see me here. Here we go. There's the light. Yeah, this should be good though. So to jump over. For those of you that happen to be seeing this as the first time, here's our driver, Ryan Axelson. We are at Detroit round five of the 1989 Art Championship season. Oh, Silent Soul. Hope your week is going better. Thank you. Yeah, I had a crazy week this week. Hope uh, all of you all had good weeks, but <laughs> I'm happy to be done with it. Hopefully next week's better. But excited to do this race today. Uh, and thank you, Silent Soul, so much for that. This should be good. Detroit is a difficult one. Now, disclaimer, and I put this in the description and I've said it a million times throughout the season thus far, but um, we will be racing at the Belle Isle circuit today, which wasn't actually raced in IndyCar until I believe 1992. Uh, from 89 through 91, they actually raced on the uh, street track that, that F1 did uh, in downtown Detroit. And that doesn't yet exist for IndyCar Racing 2, although it's being worked on right now. Uh, they might even be in the chat, the folks that are working on it, but being developed, which is great. I, I don't want to wait. Who knows? It could take months, you know, to finish. These things take a long time. So maybe by the time if we get around to doing 1990, uh, the downtown street circuit will be completed and we can race there. But today we'll be racing at Belle Isle, which I actually like as a track uh, in IndyCar 2, but it's, it's going to be a tricky one. <laughs> um, and so let's go check out some of the championship stuff. Now I'm too bright going on with the light I look I look godly right now we lower this I gotta get a better webcam that does that kind of thing automatically <laughs> well it was too dark before and now it's too bright um we'll figure it out I am wearing a white t-shirt too so that'll uh that'll make it weird there we go uh yeah the beard is kind of just a <laughs> Uh, symptom of how crazy it's been busy lately. Um, all right, so let's look at the championship so far. Continue our season. So we're on round five, uh, and so far we've done four races, three of them being ovals. Uh, and I think personally, you know, I'm a bit better at the oval racing than the road racing. Although uh, by the end of the season, maybe I'll be better at the uh, <laughs> the G and GP lapses for Gladly. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Maybe by the end of the season, I'll be a little bit better at the road races. Belle Isle is certainly going to put it to the test. Uh, I think this track almost, I think Meadowlands will be a little bit worse. But this track, more than some of the others, um, it'll be crucial to just stay off the walls for the whole thing. Uh, but the season's gone really well so far. I've got one win, the big one. I guess I could do nothing else all season and it still would have been a success. Uh, but I won the Indianapolis 500 there pretty lucky race if you didn't catch that it's i think worth a watch uh and then last last race out at milwaukee a couple weeks ago i uh, finished second to alan sir jr so yeah i think uh i think i've been maximizing in my opinion what i've been able to do all season phoenix long beach i just wasn't going to be fast enough to get the leader but I, I maximized the position and i've been on the podium every single race so far but i think i hope not but i think bell isle could change that um, but we'll have to see. So we'll come in, we'll take a look at the point standings and all that. So I am uh, our driver, Ryan Axelson, on top of the point standings, 66 points ahead of a tie for second place. And actually, really the top four here, um, you know, it's it's all within the race. So we got Emerson Fittipaldi, Michael Andretti, and Danny Sullivan, uh, two, three, four there, all one point apart pretty much. Uh, Danny Sullivan doing really well despite not having won yet. So if he wins, that could really jump them up quite a bit um but i've got the lead so far which is good uh going into this part of the schedule i guess i went past it but the next five races are all road races and so uh, i've got a little bit of a lead and my goal is to hang on to it 
So by the time we get to the 500 mile races towards the end of the season, uh, I can still be in the fight and I think I'll do pretty well at those. <laughs> Qualify 15, finish second. Yeah, the qualifying hasn't been as strong, but I've luckily been able to uh, outpace them during the race. All right, so we're at Belle Isle. I'm gonna do a couple practice laps just to make sure everything's working because it's been a couple weeks. Hopefully it all sounds good this week and, uh, and looks good. Fill some of the music here. But this will be interesting. This is the default Bell Isle that ships with IndyCar Racing 2. Put my axle set up here. Uh, and I will reduce the fuel since that's what we'll be doing in qualifying. Uh, default Detroit. And um, it's actually pretty well done. It is a slightly different layout than they race these days <clears throat> at Bell Isle. I'll show you where it's different. Um, it's the layout that was pretty much raced from 1992 uh, through 97, I believe. And then they lengthened part of the track. Gotta get out of the pits here. Just get it. All right. So, also short field today. So you would have seen on the list of standings here, 23 cars total. It's a small pit lane, and so we can't fit many more than that. Although the real races would have had around 28. Um in real life. Real races would have had about uh, around 28 cars. So um, short field means maybe a little less lap traffic. But we'll have to see. We'll come around. So this part of the track's different and I kind of missed where it veers off, but this is kind of a shortcut and it meets back up with the modern track, if you want to call it that, right around here. We come straight through. This would have been the corner that uh, Felix Rosenquist had his big accident on this past weekend. And then we'll head onto the straightaway. And from here, the rest of the track is supposed to be pretty much the same as the modern track, although, you know, IndyCar racing too. So it looks a little bit different. This corner is a really difficult one to get around. I take third gear through there during the race. And we'll come through the end of the lap. It's just all about sticking between the walls trying to push a little bit i don't think i'll be able to race you know at 100 percent the whole race uh without risking damage in the car so i have to try to plan when i'm gonna push a little bit wide there still cold tires we'll come around i just want to do a lap or two here in practice make sure everything feels good but so far so good through turn one. So this is all the same as the modern circuit. And then we come down, this would be a long straight in real life, but you can see here, it curves off to the right. So this is the little shortcut section that was present on the original layout here of Belle Isle. And then we meet up maybe right here with the track that we uh, race on these days. First gear. I'm using the uh, sequential shifter off to the side, so no paddle shifters. Partly because the paddle shifters I have are so loud, I'm sure it would annoy everybody. One thing I am worried about, though, and in some of my practicing might have happened a couple times, is downshifting an extra time and uh, blowing the engine. And that's that's a real risk. You just hit it twice by accident. Uh, the car will downshift a gear. Unless you catch it extremely quick, uh, you'll just blow the engine. Yeah, Taka, that's a good point. So this race today will be 77 laps, which is a long ways around here. I believe I can do about 32, 34 laps on a tank of fuel. And so we're going to have to pit twice. I think it's too far to try to stretch it. Uh, and the pace would have to be so slow to stretch it. So we're gonna have to make two stops, kind of like we've been doing for most of these races where run, you know, full stints, and then we'll have a little bit of a burst at the end uh, of the race. But yeah, this is a very twisty track. A lot of first and second gear corners, a lot of shifting. It's a lot harder of a track than Long Beach, I think, which is the only other street track we've raced on this season so far. Gotta make sure I get those shifts just just as that light blinks. I feel like I'm actually a little short on sixth gear. I'm 
going to do one more lap after this and practice a pit entry since we'll be doing a couple of those. Uh, like most of the season, I'm not anticipating that we'll actually have a yellow flag at all. It's certainly possible. Yellows are on, <laughs> I swear. Uh, but I think with the slightly reduced damage setting we're using, the chance of a yellow happening is pretty low. I think we'd have to have a fairly big accident happen for a yellow to, uh, to happen, which not so unrealistic. In 1989, on road circuits especially, they were not throwing yellows uh, a lot. <laughs> they were only doing it when there was pretty big accidents. If a car broke down, they wouldn't really throw a full course yellow, so not super unrealistic. Catching one of the Newman Haas cars. Hard to see, you know, pace-wise in practice here what the actual relative speed is. Cars actually come out on different fuel loads, and so tough to tell if you're actually quick. Um, I think I've definitely got top 10 pace. We'll have to see how far up I can go. Third gear for this corner. Long right-hander is a little early on the apex. to second here for this. Got both Newman Haas cars. Both Andretti's right in front of me chasing Bobby Rahal as well. All right, so we'll come through the final couple of corners and practice pit entry. It's a little bit of a weird one here. We dive to the right. And it's a very, uh, very quick jet off to the pit speed and everything. So we got to make sure we don't speed, of course. All right. But the car, the car feels all right. So we will get to uh, qualifying. All right. <clears throat> Go to the next session. And uh, I'll load the same setup. I've been using the same setup for qualifying and for the race uh, around some of the road tracks. You know, the speed difference, I guess, isn't, in my opinion, I mean, I'm sure you can make a really killer qualifying setup, but <laughs> we're going with pretty much the same thing with less fuel and see how far, see how far up the grid I can get. So hopeful to get, you know, a top, I mean, definitely a top 10 starting spot. I've been qualifying very poorly all season. So if I start up front, that'll just reduce some of the craziness off the line. And around this track, it's hard to pass. So definitely, definitely needed. Go out to qualify here. We can see Guido Daco there at the back. I'm definitely quicker than that. I think I can get into the 17 second range um, with the speed. And if we look at the times, it's actually, that would be quick enough to be maybe in the top three. Uh, but as we've learned in other races this season, AI are still qualifying right now. Oops, I was using the paddle shifters there. AI are still qualifying right now, so they can set a quicker time. We'll go out here on this outlap. Uh, like the other races, the qualifying sessions here are timed. So we pretty much can try to do as many laps as possible in this 10 minute window. Uh, we could come in the pits and change things and come back out. We have 10 minutes or nine minutes now to try to set our time. Might lengthen sixth gear, just one click for the race. I'm really pushing into that corner. I don't want to over rev. Second gear through all this. At the end of the lap here, there's a couple of these quick right hand flicks, but the first one is quite tight. That was actually a pretty good line through there. Second one's slightly faster. And then the third one here is flat out. All right, so first time lap, such a great entry into T1. Oh, touch the grass there. We luckily have grass on a couple corners. No runoffs, and that's that's one of the main things that makes this harder than it would have been. Uh, never mind no force feedback or anything like that, but there's, there's no runoffs at the end of the straightaways, which you absolutely would have in real life. If you outbreak yourself, you can go straight. Can't do that in IndyCar 2. Right, come around kind of a sloppy beginning of the lap, but 
carrying a little bit of speed. All about carrying the speed through the corners. Do a slight lift here. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. I tried to go flat out. I said slight lift, but I tried to go flat out. We'll pull out the backup car, I guess. All right. Now I'm going to really have no time to do it. Seven minutes. Luckily, we pull out the backup car instantly, but I've got very little time to actually get there. I've got some traffic, too. Guess I cannot go flat out through the fast kink on the straightaway. We've learned. Hopefully not a preview for the race. I got to do 77 of these. Out here behind Teo Fabi right now. Thanks. Thanks, Alphabet Cap. I think I need all the uh, luck I can get here. sixth gear so definitely we'll need to breathe the throttle around the fast corner just to make sure the car doesn't i think i kind of oversteered oh my god <laughs> better to learn this in qualifying yeah but now it's two front wings at least well this is uh st off to a bad start We definitely do not want to start last. So I just need to get a lap in and try not to push quite as much. Here's AJ Foyt right in front of me. <laughs> better to, everybody's saying better to learn it in practice. You're right, uh, but the race is right around the corner. So uh, I've done a good amount of practicing this week. So, uh, or actually not quite as much as a normal week, but should be better than this. I guess that proves damage is on and everything. So if I make it the whole race without breaking anything, I'll have at least achieved that. All right, let's see if I can actually get through this corner this time. Real slow. Great to get around Foyt here before the next lap starts. running into the wall there I found this tracks a little harder on the oop, there we go he goes in the pits luckily for us all right start a time lap found out this tracks a little harder on the FPS than some of the others and so if I do start at the back that's another added difficulty is it's gonna be a little choppy being back there First gear just snake it through here feels like you're just giving up so much time in every corner but the uh difference between pushing and pushing too far is so small and for a considerable amount of the lap i've only got one hand on the wheel because i'm shifting with the other one so <laughs> luckily there's no force feedback to rip the wheel out of my hand but Definitely makes it harder. Oops, scrape the wall there, no harm though. Come through the final couple of corners, so it looks like I'll actually set a lap. I don't know where this is gonna put me on the grid, but I have time to do a couple more. Oh, a third. All right, so after an auspicious start to the qualifying session, I'm up to third place overall. It's not too bad, but whoa, tail Fabio 115, and I hit the wall there pretty good. Second gear, I'm just threading it through. Might be a first gear section. Ooh, almost spun out. third place if i can hold that for the rest of the session that's a 16 flat that's about as quick as i've ever gone around here so yeah i'm definitely gonna have to lengthen six gear oh smack the wall there okay this is a throwaway lap 
thankfully and regrettably, I can get away with a bit of a wall tap um, with the arcade damage setting. So it's a little cheater, but <laughs> I think it's probably more fun than me ending the race on lap three because I just slightly touched the wall. I have to leave something for Ted Me to prove he's the best. Hold on. How is that a better lap? <laughs> All right, I'm in second. How the hell was that better? Just keep on it. I got two and a half minutes left. Might as well run it to the end. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, that, that shows me how not to get around lap traffic. I think the car might actually be okay. Maybe I can get around to, uh, <clears throat> maybe I can get around to try one more lap here. Yeah, you really just can't dive up the inside of the the lapped cars unless you're really side by side going into the corner because they'll just take the apex like you saw there you know in real life they would obviously especially a slower car would back out of it Derek Daly right in front of me here slowing me down I'm only a hundredth off the pole though Ugh. I gotta let Derek Daly pull out yeah I'm so close to the actual pole all right, come second gear for the final couple corners. Hopefully that's enough space or he pulls in the pit lane. Now, of course he doesn't. Hopefully we don't catch him by the end of the lap, but let's try one more lap. This is it. Cars planted really nicely. Oh, I drove too deep. <laughs> uh, choking choking on the fastest lap attempt well all in all i think that's a pretty good qualifying session yeah maybe i had damage or something let's take a look though at the starting lineup so i do get outside pole next to teo fabi this is a weird grid i feel like it's kind of mixed up here which is going to make for an interesting race it could mean it could mean that I get out front <laughs> and I don't know if I'd run away with it, but Teo Fabi and Ari Leindyke have not been that quick during the actual races this season. So they qualified well. Got Teo Fabi on the pole. Uh, Ryan Axelson here, I'm I'm second. So close. Eight thousandths of a second, I believe, right? Uh, and then Ari Leindyke in third, Mario Andretti in fourth. So the slower of the two Andretti's so far this season in fourth. Michael Andretti in fifth. Uh, so that he's the first championship contender, really. Back in fifth. Alistair Jr., Danny Sullivan, Scott Brayton. What happened to Emerson Fittipaldi down in 14th position? Scott Pruitt's been quick, too. So this is a really messed up grid uh, <laughs> as far as how quick everybody is. Raul Boizel back here. AJ Foyt towards the back. Guido Daco at the bottom. Well, this could really shake up or just help confirm championship but a long race so definitely can't take anything for granted with this one because it's 77 laps around Belle Isle is gonna gonna test anybody even if I led the whole race all right so got full fuel 77 laps a hot day at Belle Isle 93 degrees <clears throat> total um oh I did want to lengthen the gear that's right nobody reminded me but I remembered so I just want to go like one skosh taller just to make sure I don't over rev on full fuel. It's not going to be an issue at all, but when I get low on fuel, that's where things get a little weird. Yeah. I mean this, I guess this is a chance to stretch that championship lead, but we'll have to see. So this should be good. 77 laps. Uh, like I said, I think I can go about 32 to 34 laps on fuel. That means, you know, I would pit at lap 32 <clears throat> and then worst case scenario then pit on lap 64. I did the same thing again and then only have, you know, 15 or so laps to the end of the race, uh, which means I can go, uh, which means I can go, you know, very low on fuel. Uh, I'll have to look at tire wear. Maybe I can actually, you know, skip. It's certainly taking like 10 gallons of fuel 
to make it towards the end of the race. Um, it's not gonna not gonna take the time it would take to get tires, so I could actually maybe skip the tires and everything. <laughs> but that's right, Artsy. No heroics. All right, let's get started with this. It's gonna be a brutal one. Uh, appreciate everybody joining in. Did this kind of last minute today, so hopefully everything goes well. We'll get started on the pace lap. So all the way down on the boost for the out lap. You know, it's quite a long out lap, obviously being around the road course. But starting side by side with Teo Fabi now. I don't know. I can't remember if IndyCar 2 has a rule where you can't pass before the line. So I think I got to let Teo make sure he gets ahead of me right off the start, but then chase him down, maybe pass him right away. Just need to be careful here. Luckily, there's nobody in front. One of the hardest things <laughs> in IndyCar 2 is doing the pace laps and everything, um, or yellow flag laps. The field checks up a ton, and you kind of just have to keep a huge distance from you and the car in front to make sure you don't nail the back of them. But it's like every car can just stop on a dime when they're doing pace laps and everything, so you have to be really careful about it. Luckily, being in front, though, I don't really have to worry. Come around. Apparently, believe it or not, that's a Camaro pace car in front. Kind of looks like a Camaro. I always thought it looked like a weird wedge car. That'd be a fun, that'd be a fun one for somebody to like convert the pace car from IndyCar 2 to a modern sim. <laughs> yeah, every Pappy game up till, and I mean, even in NASCAR 4 in 2003 and stuff, they weird stuff can happen under yellows. But yes, it was a huge issue in all of the, the early NASCAR games and stuff from Papyrus. All right, but get focused. Okay, so bar wise and stuff we'll see how the car feels i'm not really anticipating having to change too much maybe just towards the end of the stint through the final few corners here let teo catch up get back on the boost just gotta really make sure i don't shift wrong blow the engine or something come through the final few corners here to get started oh i just need to get through the first couple laps without an incident Settle in. It's a long race. All right, roll into the line. Green flag is out. Here we go, Detroit. Up to fourth gear. Fifth gear then. All right, over the line into turn one. Behind Teo. Is able to get in front of Ari Leindyke there behind me in the black car. We'll just try to get away from everybody. first gear here for this S section before we get onto the back straightaway. So right on the back of Teo, not running away with it yet. Well, it looks like Michael Andretti's already up behind me. Uh-oh. And Alancer Jr. in fourth. So wasn't Michael Andretti like 10th on the grid or something? Shifted down a little early there the fast kink a little bit wide cold tires full fuel the car is very heavy I'm gonna do my warm-up session like usual all right I got Michael Andretti all over me from behind oh yeah that's right that's Mario Michael's in the six I always get him confused so Mario Andretti that makes a little more sense since I think he was fourth on the grid come through the final couple of corners though and lap one of 77 it's gonna be a long one. Be a little while till we catch lap traffic, maybe 10 laps or so, since there's only 23 cars in the race. But don't wanna over rev there. I don't know why it's so easy to over rev in IndyCar 2 compared to other games. It just feels like it sneaks up on you. breaking yourself too very easy really up on the wheel right now I need to relax slightly yeah Fabi is quicker than I think I thought he was gonna be but we're still with him so 
quick in a straight line. We always have the opportunity to change wings and stuff as we take pit stops. Oh, right to the back of him. That would be a difficult place to jump up the inside unless I was really close. Need to make sure I don't run into the back of him as we go into some of these slower corners. All right, right on the back of Fabi though. Over the line, complete another lap. Try not to get into counting the laps because it's, it's gonna feel like a very long race if I do that. I feel like I could pass into this corner if I was close enough. Throw it up the inside, maybe. Fighting in the streets of De uh, Detroit, I guess in the park. At least this track's still a street track. It's not quite the downtown circuit, but gives you the same kind of vibe. through I think I'm being held up a little bit here by Fabi but getting around him is a difficult difficult task oh, pulling up on him though come through the final corner here run straight away is so tight the whole track is so tight Pulling up on the back of Fabi. Here we go. Through this kink. Uh, I could outbreak him there, but he'd probably just turn in on me. This one's going to be a harder track to talk and race on. <laughs> just, I don't know if you can tell how much shifting and everything you have to do. Not an easy circuit at all. Still got ready behind me. All right, side by side with Fabi. Oh, it's a risky place to do it. Come up to the fast kink. I backed out of it there. I just don't see how we're gonna get through that corner together. That's where the race ender happens. It's okay, we still got plenty of time to get around him. Can do it in a safe place. Ooh, car got loose there. Might be a corner to pass. What's difficult or easy to do, which makes this difficult, is hitting the apex wall because all the corners have walls pretty much right on the apex. It's right on Fabi again. Trying to float it through here. Turn two. Uh, accelerating up on him. Come down the inside. Try to outbreak him. Oh, almost outbreak myself though. First gear. <laughs> all right. Sneak up the inside. Let's get away from him now though. Kind of first gear, just come through this S. Oh man, I surprised myself even with that one. Sometimes though, you just get a run and you gotta go for it when you get those opportunities. There we go. All right, onto the straightaway. second gear so we're in the lead at Detroit super early on and uh, it looks like Alancer Jr. just took over second so <laughs> nowhere near out of the woods but we'll just see if how long I can stretch the lead or try to get away from Alancer Jr. without pushing too hard I'm 95% right now let's take that extra little second to get on the gas just to make sure I'm not going to hit anything we'll push harder only if we need to And not able to look at chat too much. I can see y'all talking in there, but <laughs> it's a lot to keep my eyes on in this one today. Tails back to third. Yeah, luckily it was only Unser Jr. that got around him, but 
I'll have to see how fast Unser Jr. is on raw pace. He wasn't exactly pressuring me when I was trying to get around Fabi, so I might actually be quicker than him. A little bit wide there. I had to wait to get on the throttle. I was starting to slide quite a bit. Hopefully the car lasts the stint, but oh, there's Unser Jr. right behind me. I make a bad corner as well. It's pulling in a little bit. It is Axelson versus Unser. Unser Jr. It's kind of like Milwaukee. I was chasing Unser Jr. at Milwaukee, and it's always one of those things. Another 10 laps. Oh, it's wide there. Another 10 laps, and I could have done it or something, but Unser Jr. was just able to get the better of me. Rolls are reversed now, but it's early in the race, and he's right behind me. I think if I don't make a mistake, it's going to be hard for him to get around. Oh, there's the mistake understeering so much there coming out of the fast kink oh and the car spins no 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 get it back to first gear i hit the wall but not very hard ah there's the mistake literally as i said it that might be me needing to change some of the roll bar settings we got one of the newman hosses behind me here just try to pick it back up get everything back together oh no yeah the rear end of the car just came around on me lower the rear bar a little bit Ooh. all right i got away with that pretty luckily but Unser jr might be gone up there i don't even see him already We were four seconds behind at the line, so we'll just have to see. I'm just going to try to put together as good a lap as I can. Yeah, I was really sliding on the rears, so... Probably heated them up a little bit, but I've reduced the rear roll bar a bit, so that should help not slide as much. Putting a lot of lateral load into this corner. Understeering still. Mario's all over me now, too. Oh, Mario's going to look to the inside. No. Long way to go, but I don't miraculously see Allenser Jr. slowing down. We'll see. I think I'm going to lose even more time this lap to him. Whoa, another 2.5 seconds. Long race to go. 69 more laps. We're not even 10 laps into this thing, and so much has already happened. Unfortunately, if you start up front, there's only one way to go. <laughs> Either you stay up front or you get overtaken. So when you start out back like I have been doing, it makes me look maybe a little better than I am to get to pass cars. It wouldn't be a GP laps race if there wasn't a little bit of a fender bender during it. I'm gonna take these lines pretty conservatively now to make the car understeer as I drive it rather than slide the rear end. That's a little slower. Oh, this is going to be a really hard one to stay in it the whole race and not make a big mistake at some point. It's just walls nonstop. I lost another two seconds on Unser Jr. there, but I've pulled out slightly on Mario behind me, so there is hope to stay up here. 
at least right now, I have a feeling there's some fast cars stuck in traffic towards the back. I wouldn't be surprised to see a bit of Paldi or somebody at some point. Yeah, and the lapped cars, you're right. The lapped cars will help somewhat. Just have to see how good Monster Jr. is at getting around him. A really wide line onto the straightaway there. Scrape the wall slightly. Ugh. I need to take a little bit wider line through there, but then you put a lot of lateral load on the tires and it would be easy to spin. So we're take stock of where we are. 67 laps to go. We're about 10 laps into it. 27 gallons of fuel. Another 20 laps or so before hitting. I'm gonna go as far as I can. Unless something weird happens, we'll go as far as I can on fuel and everything. as I can on fuel just to keep my options open and in case we do get a caution you never know it can happen a little bit better line through there but I tapped the inside wall tapping walls everywhere the answer changers pulled out to 10 seconds ahead I'm right in the fight with Mario Andretti behind me. Ooh, a little wide there. So I think, I think it was maybe going to happen no matter what, if he's that much faster. I feel like I'm finally settling in a little bit as I say that go through the riskiest part of the track but I'm a little I'm pulling out ever so slightly on Mario behind me just lap by lap uh Alancer Jr. unfortunately is just gone in front but a long race to go we're gonna start hitting lap traffic and everything and we're gonna make pit stops and it's gonna be a lot to do. Yeah, my car is definitely better on light fuel, but is it better than everybody else's? We'll have to see. All right, that lap, Monster Jr. did not pull ahead as much as previous laps, so he might be catching the lap traffic now. And so starts the game. And remember, they change throughout the race, too. If Monster Jr. is really quick now, it does not mean he's going to be quick the entire race. We've seen that in some of the other races this season where cars towards the end are a little bit slower than they were at the beginning. Yeah, I do have a lot of understeer, but as I, <laughs> I spun out already, I lowered my rear bar to make sure I don't spin out again. I did like a half spin, I guess, that's what you'd call it. First gear. Not able to get all the way to the left side of the track there. Ooh, that was a pretty hard hit. Need to avoid doing stuff like that. Let's start calling me Sparky. Let's <laughs> do it again. The uh, aluminum rims that I have on the car just will be totally gone by the end of the race. Right. 
So I'm still only about a second and a half ahead of Mario. Rick Mears is up to third or fourth. Yeah, I'm actually gaining on little Al. And I see my first lap car ahead. I think my only hope is if little Al actually gets stuck here behind some cars. I gotta try to find my way around them too and if it's anything like practice was it's gonna be really tricky is that the slow cars they're almost as quick as I am in a straight line it seems it's just through the corners that they're slow but unless you get side by side it's tough to make a pass right, it looks like we got Daco back here <laughs> see if I can go by him here oh my god he stays in it Allow Mario to close right up. Here we go. Up the inside of Daco. No! Ah! Too much load in the car. There goes Mears. Oh man. I have to even reverse and everything. Oh, I'd be surprised if there was a yellow or not a yellow. Oh, it's kind of my fault for putting the car, but that one corner seems to be the big issue for me so far. Even though it was brought on by a lapped car, I just turned the car in too hard. Get down on the rears again. Maybe also the front. Just get the car a little softer overall. I don't know. Well, so a messy start. It looks good for a minute. to gather it back up should be able to catch him definitely quicker than mario have to imagine i can catch him i lost a lot of time though i had to back up and everything almost halfway through the stint Ooh, a little wide there god i get so sketchy and pushing maybe a little too hard, but the other cars are fast. <laughs> Still in the top five, despite all of that. Especially with the way the standings are. I mean, Hunter Jr. is still a way off from fighting in the championship, even though he got that win. So not hope is not lost, but this would certainly eat into the lead a little bit or tighten things up. him back up to lapped cars. I can see Rick Mears here caught in them. Remember, the time that it shows on the relative is the time behind the leader. So you have to do a little bit of mental math to see the gap with the car in front. I wish they would just let you buy through there like they would in real life. And they're so slow. This is Pancho Carter in front. Oh, no. Oh, Ray Hall snuck up the inside as I was just going to wait behind Carter for a corner. Ray Hall's not, <laughs> not sleeping. Caught me sleeping. Oh my god, this is so hard to get around lap traffic. I mean, I guess it would really be that way. They would probably let you buy a little easier in spots, but lap traffic is always an issue at a street track. I'm back to fifth now. Oh, 
Whoa. I was thinking of sneaking up the inside. I tapped the wall pretty hard, but I think I'm okay. Ray Hall side by side with Poncho Carter here. If I was a lot quicker in a straight line, it wouldn't be too bad. I'm a little quicker, but I catch them right as we come to the kink and they're not backing out. Feels like this is one of the corners to pass on, but ugh, the car even got weird that time. Man, I snagged the wall really good there. All right, got up the inside of Carter. Ooh. Well, we're only a few laps in, but this is, <laughs> this is definitely the hardest race so far. I knew this one wouldn't be easy. It's making me even more frightened for Meadowlands, which is basically this, but even tighter. Tighter and faster. But I guess that's why Kart and IndyCar ugh, are so great, because there's so many different types of circuits. It's never going to be the same every week. God, it's a mess up here. Ray Hall looking to the inside. Oh, he's going to go wide. We've got Bernard Jourdain in front. We've got Teo Fabi right behind me again. Slide the car there a bit. I mean, we're pretty much going to be in traffic for the rest of the race at this stage. He's looking up the inside. It's going to break later there. Ugh. I think I've hit the wall there almost every every lap so far. All right, there we go. Up the inside. That's my new corner. At least one place on the track I can get around lap traffic. on the back of Ray Hall now as we come down to turn one. Oh, I could have done that. Stuck up behind Kogan here. Just got to get around him up the inside. Kind of first gear. Uh, Kogan parks it on the apex. on the brakes there as we come out of the back straight away Ooh, a little bit better of a run than usual come around the left side there we go that's how you get it done before the kink just trying to keep the car straight there when i get on the brakes to make sure i don't spin it out it's a heavy braking zone with a turn in it so not so easy got didier days now just launch it up the inside, kind of miss the apex, but that's better than being stuck behind him for a whole lap. All right, finally through that pack of slower cars, it seems. Ooh, there's a car in the pits. Mario Pits. That's pretty early for the pit stop. I have trouble with the car, not sure. We're up to fourth now. Bobby Rahal snaking ahead. 40 seconds off the lead. Oof. This rate, Junior's going to put us all a lap down. Only 10 seconds off second, but I'm 40 seconds off the lead. So, Alancer Junior's doing a supreme job today. Third gear. The car is very understeery now, but it's under braking or turn in, there's the risk of losing the rear end. Oh, a little late on the brakes there, you can see you run wide. So we're coming down on fuel. 
think I use about 1.2 gallons a lap, so. It'll be about 10 laps till I pit. So now with Mario falling out, Rick Mears is up to second. Bobby Ray Hall third, I'm fourth. That's not a bad idea, Pavel, to move the brake bias a little bit. Try that out. It's almost it's very far forward to begin with. Uh, I think I've got the opponents on 95%, but it it's kind of an irrelevant number because it depends on the car set ratings, the driver ratings for the individual car set that I'm using. And then also the track has all its own settings for difficulty. So yeah, I think it's 95%, but the track difficulty and the AI ratings for the individual car set kind of matter more than that. <laughs> They're competitive, that's what they are set to. Coming up on a black car, I have to imagine that's AJ Foyt. Take the worst corner ever. like I've fallen out of touch a little bit with the cars in front. I'm not super far behind Ray Hall, but he's actually stretching in front of me a bit. Yeah, here's AJ and Derek Daly. Uh, this track almost makes you <laughs> dizzy going through all the left and rights. Ooh, car got loose there. Let's see it slide. too far behind Foyt to do my favorite move maybe oh no he blocks me oh my god I hit him too somehow didn't spin him out which is kind of remarkable and he blocks the inside what's Foyt doing he's a pretty aggressive driver so I guess <laughs> that maybe makes sense but kind of frustrating right behind him here come across the line maybe I can get him down into turn one I don't know oh squeezes me back we're gonna have a little race with the lapsed car here. All right, there we go. Around the outside, inside. Whichever side works. We've got Derek Daly right in front now. No, it's Randy Lewis in front, I believe. Oh, see if I can get ahead of him before the kink. Oh, he's going to stay there. Come on, Randy. Oh, my God. Somehow didn't spin out there. The inside of him. Just lunge. 
Oh my god, getting around any of the lapped cars is just hard work, so gotta keep that in mind for the rest of the race. Just take no prisoners. <laughs> just throw the car where it needs to go to get around them. Instead of losing time, I think I probably lost a lot of time on Ray Hall. Really fighting through Detroit. 10 gallons, so about eight more laps, I think. Imagine we'll start seeing we're at 50 laps, so we're, what is that, 37, 27 in? 27 in. So in the next five laps or so, I'd imagine we'll start seeing cars pit. You want to look at the tire wear. Oh, the tires are actually looking okay, so at the end of the race, I'll have to see how the car feels, but I might be able to just do, just change the tires here at this first stop, and then run those tires to the end, just change the fuel at the end of the race. Since we won't need a full tank of fuel. Should make my pit stop fairly quick. I don't speed in the pit lane. Like what happened at Long Beach. Got Michael Andretti just a couple positions back. Teo Fabi's only five seconds back. <laughs> I'm not. Not causing a caution on purpose. Cautions will happen if they happen, which I don't think it will. The other races this year are any sign. We've only gotten like two cautions in the first you know, four races, so. And there are both, <laughs> both things that I caused, but not on purpose. Oh, sliding the car there. It's almost imperceptible, the sliding in this game. It really takes a while till you can catch on to when you're going to lose the car. Fifty more laps of this. My God. I think I based the distance on this on the ninety two race, the first race here, so it should be it should be what was actually run. It just feels like a long race. It's such a technical track. If I hit that inside wall there going through the kink, that's easily race over. I'm really falling into a pit here. Lost a ton of time to Ray Hall and Mears in front. Bobby pulling out on Fabi and Michael Andretti behind me. So I'm just kind of in my own little world here, which <laughs> not too bad for ugh, making it to the end. So I almost throw the car into the wall there, but a little less interesting to watch. Only got six gallons of fuel left. I can feel it. The car is very nervous feeling. A little wide.
So I imagine we're going to start seeing people pit real soon. Starting to get into that window. 38 laps to go. It's going to be a real quick stint at the end of the race. Assuming I make it there. The light was coming on because I was over revving the engine. Talked about this in another race, but I I don't wish you could just leave the light as the rev indicator. I can see the fuel. I don't need the light to just be constantly red. There'd probably be a way to like cancel that in real life. Bobby Ray Hall's in the pits. We'll get around him, obviously, for a couple laps here, which is good. I actually would love if they all pit a little bit early because I bet I'm quicker. Oh, Bobby Ray Hall came out in front of me. Oh, that's not good when somebody can make a pit stop and then come out ahead of you. But I bet I'm quicker on light fuel here. So this, I mean, I'm obviously not going to pass him because of the pit stops, but that seems like a really quick pit stop there, Bobby. Getting a run on Ray Hall, but we're gonna come up to the kink here. It's not really a place to do it. Oh, he leaves the inside open. Late apex for him. Oh, we're gonna understeer there. I was thinking I could carry some speed through, make the lunge down on the inside here. Got Rick Mears in the pits now. So somehow I lost enough time for them to take pit stops and then come out still ahead of me, which is no good. Got three and a little bit of gallons left, so I can go maybe two more laps. Ooh, car's so loose there. Really hard to drive on light fuel. I'm not sure why Ray Hall came out in front of me. I mean, it's almost like he didn't even have a pit time. Quick mirrors, too. It's not good. <laughs> I don't want to lose time in the pits, either. Yeah, he might not have taken a full tank, but... I don't know. Strategy's too complex for me to think of while I'm driving. I was just going to fill her back up and do another you know, 30 laps or so. Tires are really not good anymore. Ugh. We're going to do one more lap. And I just stuck behind Bobby, which is, means not really maximizing this light fuel. Uh, I'm going to actually pit. It's just the tires are no good anymore. All right, come down. 80 miles an hour, a little slow on the entry, come to the pit stall. Yeah, I was just losing time behind Ray Hall anyway. My God, this is not an easy race. To see where I come out. All right, we got some cars pitting in front of me. <laughs> Emerson Fittipaldi slides in, get around him. 80 miles an hour, no faster, not even a mile an hour faster. Just leave a little bit of space, lose a little bit of time, but it's worth it. Ahead of John Jones. Ooh, it's gonna look up the inside. Gonna reset the bars, I think. See how the car feels here. All right, come out. It says I'm still in fourth, so I'm not sure what's going on with the pits. I'm gonna reset my brain that the car is gonna be a lot slower now. We should be able to go another 30 or so laps.
But yeah, Ray Hall and them might be trying to split the final stint here. Not optimistic, though, about leaving the tires on towards the end. The car felt terrible there the last couple laps, just skating all over the place. Could be because of the fuel, but I don't know if the time we would gain because we don't take tires is really going to make a difference at the end. Three, four laps to go. We should pit. It'll be about 15 laps at the end. Stuck in behind John Jones. I imagine maybe he's light on fuel, I hope. Left-hander is definitely my problem corner this race. Oh, just understeering there. Need to get the bars a little stiffer. Bars too soft right now. Oh, oh my god, I almost over-revved. Well, I did over-rev, but I almost blew the engine there. Hopefully that didn't damage anything. I don't have breakdowns on for myself, but you can definitely blow the engine by over revving it. So I'm already a minute and two behind the leader and in fourth place, but I'm gonna go a lap down here. Stuck behind John Jones. I got Michael Andretti catching me. I need to get around Jones here. Jones is probably in 20th position. All right, on the throttle now. Go around the outside. We're going to be side by side into the kink. Just can't do it there. Throw it up the inside, favorite spot. Just take the whole line away from him. Oh, finally. This one's all about survival at this point. <laughs> I don't know where the pace went. I had some really good pace right off the line, but it's like top three or four cars are just very, very quick. So it's all about survival now. I'm in the top five. So I do. I would love to finish on the podium, keep that streak alive, but if not a podium, a top five, I feel like is necessary just to make sure I keep this lead in the championship. Interesting to see though how fast that lead group is. Or, I mean, they're only 30 seconds behind. They're pretty much sticking with Alan Sir Jr.'s pace at this point. Rick Mears and Bobby Ray Hall. They just lost a lot of time on the start. Oh, there's always pressure. <laughs> Luckily, the other guys I'm fighting in the championship are behind me still, so. At least the ones I'm fighting right now, but, you know, after a sequence of races here, that could all change. Still very early in the season. Only round five. Whoa, where was the corner that time? There we go. 
Oh, this one's fun to watch. It's uh, really brutal to drive. This is definitely the most difficult race so far. Just this track is very punishing. If you get anything wrong. Second gear here. Pain of my existence, that corner. Understeer the whole way through that <laughs> left hand kink. Well, it looks like Bobby Rahal just overtook Rick Mears as well up front. They've been losing a lot of time to Alan, Alan Sir Jr., so they're not quite as quick as him. They are fighting with each other, which you never know what could happen there. I'm losing time, about two seconds a lap to Unser Jr., so he's going to be about ten more seconds behind me. Actually, he'll be uh, he'll be passing us. That was a pretty good hit. 39 laps to go. 20 seconds behind Bobby Ray Hall here in third. Rick Mears got back around him, so they're just fighting back and forth up there. a car now so we're gonna have some lap traffic to deal with hopefully a little bit better now at dealing with these slower cars There's a couple places I know I can get around them this one might be Derek Daly now catch him through the first part of the lap not so many great places to pass here on the beginning of the lap a little too far back to try it into this corner well tail fabi's got a lap down so that's where Unser jr is Ooh. Ah, i should have kept him behind him and snuck up the inside there on the straightaway here car actually feels decent right now side by side with daily able to sneak in front of him before the kink luckily floated on through there slap on the brakes right i'm down second gear all right see got around him a little bit better i'm learning probably be Annoying to go watch the beginning of the race again now that I know a couple corners where it's easy to get past and I can see a whole stretch of slower cars to head so this is gonna be a tricky few laps. I think probably Scott Brayton up there. Thirty-seven laps to go, so we're not too far off being able to pit and make it the rest of the way, which I don't really want to do because that means I'm gonna be running on heavy fuel. But I might not stretch it absolutely as far as it could go 
on this stint, especially if the car starts feeling terrible again. It'd be better, since I'm going to probably put tires on anyway, it'd be better to, uh, you know, pit when I can do about 20 gallons of fuel, half a stint, 17, 18 laps to go, and that way it takes about the same amount of time to do the tires as the fuel. But a whole string of cars. Actually, I think we're going to start lapping some of these guys twice. So some of them are very slow. God. We got to watch out for Brayton here in front trying to make a move. He's probably trying to put a lap on these cars. Oh, everybody fans out. Let's go. All right. It got around Brayton, luckily, but that was sketchy. But Guido Daco in front. I think last place in the race. Ooh, little tap there on the wall. Oh, I didn't get the car right on the right line to get the accelerator down earlier. Try to throw it up the inside, get up around Daco, <laughs> run him out to the wall. Whew. Take no prisoners here. Let's just get through the cars quickly as I can and see Michael Andretti in my mirrors I think but definitely don't want to let him by All right, pulling up on Bernard Jourdain but we're gonna come up to the kink here let him take that oh come on we go just throw it in try not to lose the rear end man see how loose the car gets through that one corner Get the inside of phase maybe oh, i'm gonna outbreak myself there <laughs> that was really close i actually see a lot of that if you watch some of these old races and folks are trying to pass each other. They'll just totally outbreak themselves into the corners and then go straight off into the runoff. And we don't have any runoff here, so. Oh my God. <laughs> just park it in front of Thais. That's how I have to do it though. There's no way to get around them unless I just go super deep into the corners. All right, lost a lot of time there, but stayed ahead of Michael Andretti. Maybe made some entertainment for you. Whoa, under steering onto the straightaway. That's no good. <laughs> We're just at the halfway point. Man. there pushing another lapped car I think it's Foyt again 34 laps to go so if we pit right now we would make it to the end so I think I need probably 16 gallons of fuel when we pit I could take 20 we'll have to see when I pit but 20 is about the time it would also take to get tires. So probably what I'm going to go for is 20 gallons. If anybody wants to do the math, 20 divided by 1.2, that should tell me how many laps that would be. Yeah, thanks for the reminder on the roll bars. This is John Andretti in front, actually, not AJ Foyt. Sneak it up the inside, just park it. That's how you pass an Indy car too. Let's 
Looks like Rahal got around mirrors again. So I gotta leave 16 and two thirds laps. 16 laps. And so I should pit. All right, with 15 to go, take 20 gallons and fuel. Still a ways to go on this stint. Now I am catching second and third, but I don't know if they're stuck behind a lap car. Hunter Jr. is pretty close behind me at this point. Third gear here. Thirty-two laps to go means got about seventeen laps until pitting, I think. Feels like a very long time, but we'll see how that all works out. Rick Mears is only nine seconds ahead of me. Always, always make it feel like I'm going to be able to pass somebody. Something to work towards, though. Just trying to keep doing my lines. I think my laps, I have not looked at a single lap time that I've done this whole race. But I feel like I'm doing all right right now, lap time-wise. And there's a whole string of lapped cars in front, so that's probably why I'm catching Rick, but it doesn't matter how. If I can get to him and get around him, maybe I can hold him up. It doesn't seem like Bobby Rahal's pitting early or anything. I don't know how he was so fast on that pit stop earlier. The brakes all wrong for that corner. If I can get around this whole group quick, you never know. Is that Danny Sullivan ahead of me? We got Scott Pruitt right here, directly in front of me, who's who I was racing at Long Beach. Parks it up the inside. We're all trying to get around Derek Daly, I think. Oh, come on. Oh, my God, I hit him. Locked. I'm gonna slide in. There's nowhere to get around when they're going too wide here. Come on. Oh, he hit the wall. <laughs> See, I'm not the only one hitting the walls. Thanks, Randy Lewis, actually. Uh, and whatever I had gained on Rick Mears is lost, and I've now got Michael Andretti once again on my mirrors. We'll just storm it up the inside. Oh my God, almost taking out Randy Lewis. Able to get around Scott Pruitt. They're almost so unpredictable that they're predictable. Oh, can I get around the right side? There we go. It's probably the easier side to actually pass them on. I don't know why I've been doing the left side there. Ooh, that was pretty fast into this right-hander. Great 
to the walls. Yeah, I am having a cannonball every corner. It's the only way to get around the laughed cars, though, unfortunately. And probably the cars for position as well. Just not a lot of straight sections at this track, so passing in a straight line isn't it's only that back straight away. Yeah, this is Danny Sullivan in front, so. I got the leader behind me. I can see Allenser Jr. in my mirrors. White and blue car, Valvoline, of course. He's just smoking everybody today. It's like Milwaukee all over again. Was Allenser Jr. gonna get on a hot streak here? He was pretty slow the first three races of the season. I guess that happens sometimes. Oh, I just hit the wall slightly there. I run a little wide. It's trying to really push it to get up the inside of Sullivan here. <laughs> Able to do it. We've got Kevin Kogan now in front. 28 laps to go. We're getting through this one. This feels like the longest race I've ever done. Well, just snagged the wall there. If we go a lap down here, then yellow flag wouldn't really do anything for us. It actually hurt me. Not quite close enough on Kogan either through here to get him before the kink or anything. get Kogan at my favorite spot getting more and more aggressive there it's gonna bite me at some point but hopefully I'll make it through the rest of the rest of this race first and 27 laps to go we need to get like i said to about lap or 15 so another 12 or so laps on this stint if i can should be good on fuel for that yeah i mean these races it should be about 200 miles as far as length that's most of the non 500 milers even at the ovals or the road courses are about 200 miles it's kind of the standard indycar distance from this era understeer my whole way through there so the car is not perfect in every corner some of the corners it feels good some of them it's loose some of them it's understeering Challenging track here in Detroit. Oh yeah, Mears and Ray Hall are not out of touch with me. Depends on what happens with lap traffic. They could have a crash, who knows. But a little bit of open track here, but Allenser Jr. coming up fast behind me. believe Unser Jr.'s done a whole lap on me, but he's just in another world again. He's looking all around me. I'm just gonna let him go when he gets to me, because there's no point. Yeah, we'll let him up the inside here. There's no point in risking a crash or something. So, 
No dreams of winning in Detroit here today, unfortunately, but still place well. I'm in the top five. A podium is unlikely, but not impossible. Just stick on it. It's 25 laps to go. This will end eventually. Oh, I hit the wall there. And I guess because the ovals are not quite as mentally challenging as this, this feels harder than the Indy 500 was. Even though that was a lot longer than this. Yeah, I mean, the road courses that don't have walls on either side of them don't feel quite as hard as this. <laughs> this one, you're just seconds from disaster at every corner. Here's in Ray Hall, still going at it. It's a good race up there. Mears just got around Ray Hall again. Ooh. Get on the grass there and the car over rotates so quickly. That was a hard hit. Getting away with a lot here today. This this race would have been over, I think, on the second lap <laughs> had I been on full damage. So much respect to anybody that's able to do a full race around here with any kind of speed and do full damage. I don't think that would work out very well for me. three laps to go less than 10 laps from our pit stop that I want to do this is, I think when the car is its fastest is about right now tires are not completely worn out fuel is pretty light carving up the corners there and I get my hands onto the wheel enough to adjust the bars is hard with the sequential shifter it's doing so much around this track Mike Landretti behind me. I didn't catch how far the gap was. Unfortunately, you lose it on the relative screen there once uh, you go a lap down. But got Michael Andretti behind me, Emerson Fittipaldi behind him. So the two that I'm really racing for the championship are back there behind me, which is good. Um, Rick Mears, Alan Sir Jr., Bobby Ray Hall. Obviously, if they keep doing this well, I'm totally going to be racing them for the championship. But as it stands right now, this could come off as kind of a neutral race which is all I could hope for through these road tracks. I can come out of this five race stint, you know, around the top three in the championship, I think. Whoa. 
God, what was that? I think it'll be game on for the championship. The car suddenly feels terrible again. Just slid so much through that corner. I got the rear bar pretty much all the way down and the front pretty stiff, which should make it understeer like crazy. Light fuel with this setup. Probably could have worked on that a little more, I guess. Yeah, it sounds like Andretti's closing on me, which is probably going to make the end of this thing uncomfortable. Definitely cannot lose the top five. I want to keep that streak alive. He's for fifth, but then that puts me in the grasp of Emerson Fittipaldi to take that away, which would be bad. If both of them beat me, that would be no good. Oh, totally missed the corner. Snag the wall a little bit there. All right, what are we at? Got eight more laps of fuel, apparently, but we're not going to go all the way to the bitter end on this. Tires are terrible once again, so about five more laps, we should be pitting. see a car in my rear view mirror which is no good it's been a lot of laps since i've seen a lapped car which is good but also means there's nothing to slow down my competitors that last lap was no good and dreddy pulled in quite a bit i hope i'm fast in the final stint should have a good ratio. Brand new tires and 20 gallons of fuel should be perfect to uh, try to set some good laps. All right, we got a car in front. I think it's Raul Boisel, actually. Haven't seen him today. Actually, I don't know. It could make sense to pit before this whole group slows me up for five laps. Oh, and I think that's Bobby Rahal up there. All right. Let's see how the rest of this lap turns out, but I think I might pit at the end of this lap because trying to work through this mess in front of me is going to slow me down a ton. I think we caught all the way back up to Alancer Jr., but there's Bobby Rahal. So if I duck in the pits, do my stuff, and then hopefully come out in clear air, I might be able to do something to get around Rahal. They're all caught up behind Foyt here. I'm gonna get caught up a little bit at the end of the lap, but it's gonna be the plan. Whoa. Boisel there, taking it to the inside. And we're going to cheat a little bit and pause it for a second to do all the pit menu stuff, because we could, obviously, in real life, say it over the radio. There's no way I'm driving and doing it all at the same time. All right, so we got... What is that? Can't even do math now. So we got 77 minus... 77 minus 60, so we got 17 laps, obviously, uh, times 1.2, so I need just over 20 gallons to make it. I'll do, I'll do 24, that should be plenty. We'll change our tires. All right, so that should be good. So this will get us in the pits, we'll do the pit stop, and then try not to blow the engine to come in the pit lane, try not to speed either, down to first gear. Stop in our pit stall. 
So this will get us our fuel. Quick stop as well. Try not to speed on the way out. I don't exactly know where the pit lane ends here. Probably right there, but I'll just wait a second longer. I'm out ahead of a car. That might be ammo. So it's a red and white car. All right, now we're on to the finish line. Yeah, I got to reset the roll bars. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I had it set to understeer. It's when you... It's when you aggressively have the car set up to oversteer throughout the run that uh, if you forget to reset the bars, bad things can happen. But I'm basically moving it to more understeering condition as I go. All right, I got Emerson Fittipaldi behind me, and he's fast right now. But I should, once the tires get up to temp here in a lap or so, I should be fairly quick, I'd imagine. Oh, understeering there. Can't let him by. Absolutely cannot let him by. Get it down to first gear. Might have, might have fought off that charge by Mo. If I let him by, that would have just ruined everything because he would have held me up after a lap or so. But I'm still in the top five, so will I get? I mean, I should easily get fourth back, hope, <laughs> hopefully, and then will I gain even more than that? We'll have to see. But I'm should be on it till the end of the race. A little wide there. Basically, need to do qualifying laps. Now's the time to push a little bit without doing anything too crazy. Third gear, just ride that white line best I can. I still got ammo right behind me, but when he's looking, as long as I don't spin out or something, hopefully he doesn't try to dive bomb me like I've been doing everybody. I'm understeering a lot. I gotta loosen up the car a little bit. Yeah, this is a DOS game. For those wondering in the chat, this is IndyCar Racing 2. It came out in 1995 from Papyrus, who went on to make NASCAR 2003 and pretty much the same group that makes iRacing these days. This is their last IndyCar sim, and uh, it's a great one. <laughs> and you're watching here round five of a... Ooh, smack the wall a little bit there. That was a pretty hard hit. You're watching round five of a 1989 season. So this is a custom car set. We're racing some different tracks than would have raced in 1989, but doing a whole championship it's been going pretty well so far we're just getting towards the end here at Belle Isle Detroit and uh, I'm in the top five but should have a chance to get fourth back and uh, maybe even a podium but we'll have to see Alancer Jr. is pretty much killing the whole field today up there in the lead surprised how fast Emo is behind me. Maybe he's spurred on a little bit by being close to me, but he still has to pit. Oh, almost hit the wall there. I did, but almost hit it harder. All right, Rick Mears is in the pits. Rick Mears is out. Oh, how did that happen? We'll have to see after the race what the failure was, but Rick Mears in the closing stages of the race fought the whole race pretty much with Bobby Rahal for second place, and uh, he's out. Yeah, it's not, uh, this game does not have 3D, I guess, what would you call it, a Y-axis for physics, so you do not, or it does have a Y-axis, but the car cannot get airborne in any way. That wasn't a feature till Grand Prix Legends. For those wondering how to get this to run, it's DOSBox and uh, Ted Meat, who does a lot of streams with these older games, has some great tutorials on his website. I'm sure somebody will put the link in the chat. Ooh, no. Oh, man. All right, I got to concentrate here. 
So I got oversteer. Fell off the track. I'm actually back on the lead lap somehow. Looks like Hunter Jr. behind me, but Fittipaldi got a round. He's got a pit though, but that's not good because that means I'm losing a little bit of time. It looks like Bobby Ray Hall's in the pits. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to get ahead of him because of this stop. Oh, I might have. I might have. He's going to be out of the pits now. Oh, I got ahead of Bobby Ray Hall. So I'm behind Emerson, but he's got a pit ahead of Ray Hall. We got Hunter Jr. right behind me as I missed the corner there. For those just joining as well, <laughs> this is the end of a 77 lap race around here. So it's been quite the uh, mental test to stay on the track the whole time. Not too worried about Mo because he's going to have to pit. I think I might have lost that spot, though, to Michael Andretti with the half spin I had. This corner is such a difficult one. Unless somehow Mo doesn't have to pit, but I'd be so surprised by that. All right, Unser Jr. is going to have to get around me soon. Catching a few lapped cars. Of course, we'll make it interesting right at the end. Cross my fingers for that podium, though. Oh, I think Emo might have gone in the pits. Or Michael Andretti's in the pits. Let's see how this works out. Emo's in the pits as well. We get around Emo. We're up to second. Here comes Scott Brayton out of the pits ahead. So Michael Andretti's still in the pits. Oh, man. How did this all happen? <laughs> Announcer Jr. is right behind me, but he's the leader. Get around Brayton there. I don't think I've passed anybody there today. If you are interested in trying out this game, there's a really good community for it. And in the description of the video, I've got uh, the website, IndyCarRacing2.net. Oh, it's almost over the engine. Don't do that now. I just got to keep it on the track. Oh. <laughs> Making a lot of mistakes here. I just need to pick the car. Uh, but IndyCarRacing2.net, it's in the description of the video. It's a forum and a website with a bunch of download links for the car sets and tracks and all that stuff. And uh, if you have questions, it's the right place to ask them. So go sign up over there. All right, so what do I got? 16 gallons of fuel. 12 laps to go. Am I going to make it on fuel? Be close. I could turn down the boost a little bit. I just don't want to give up any time that I don't need to. Need my chat crew chiefs to do a little math for me. It's going to be tight. I don't know why it would be tight. We did the math before. That's Ari Leindyke out of the pits in front of me. He's going to be a little slow, I think, for a lap as his tires heat up. Get a run on him. Down the straightaway. Should be able to get in front of him before the kink. Here we go. Oh, you pass there. Hunter Jr. right behind me. He's right around Lion Dyke as well. <laughs> no issues. There. That corner's easy to overshoot. All right, 11 laps to go. I think I'll be about a lap or two good on fuel. But if anybody has been doing some math and wants to confirm that with me, let me know. <laughs> and I'm the only other car in the lead lap right now, but Unser Jr. is breathing down my neck. He gets a run on me. I'm just going to let him go. There's no point in almost getting in an accident or something to keep him there. You don't get extra points for finishing on the lead lap. In fact, that would actually help my fuel situation since I would need to do one lap less. And at this point, I'm all about doing a lap less, honestly. 
I'm really, this is making me much more optimistic about the Meadowlands race later in the season. It's going to be such a hard one. AJ Foyt and Bernard Jourdain right in front of me here. I see a whole string of cars right behind Unser Jr. And I can't help but imagine at least one of those <laughs> Bobby Ray Hall, Michael Andretti and such. Oh, there goes Foyt in the pits, thankfully. All right, that's going to help things a lot. Come across the line. Ten laps to go. Whoa. Touch the grass a little bit there. Car gets loose. Oh, here comes Unser Juniors. Go, go, go. Here we go. All right. Let him by. I think I still got Ari Leindyke behind me, so that's fine. He's not actually for position. We'll keep our eyes on the mirrors for a yellow and blue car for Bobby Ray Hall. Would have lost a little time there if I was only five seconds up on Ray Hall, but just keep trying to push. Should have a few more lapped cars to get in the way and all that. We'll have one last lap to do, so we actually only have nine laps to go. Oh. Should be totally fine on fuel now that I'm down a lap as well. Oh, I see him there. Oh, no. Bobby Ray Hall is right behind me. He's not right behind me, but he's the next car behind me. I need to get around Bernard Jourdain here with Unser Jr. I got another car peeling off into the pits. Jr. is going to take a look at Jourdain. Come across the line. Nine laps to go. Four seconds on Ray Hall. Ray Hall's caught up here a little bit. I need him to get by so I can sneak by with him. Here he goes up the inside. Oh, come on. It's going to make it tricky. I'm going to lose a bunch of time here. Car got loose there. Yeah, I know I need to keep Ray Hall behind me, but it's nowhere to pass when you got these two fighting right in front. Car got really skittish into this corner. Try to get a nice run on Jordan here. I'm pretty far back to do the move. Can I do the move up the inside? <laughs> Almost I'll break myself. It's going to push Jordan wide. I think Ray Hall will probably get a run on him too. All right. Eight laps to go. Seven laps to go, probably. So I'm a lap down. I think Jordan held up Bobby Ray Hall a little bit, but changed some of the bar settings there. The car to understeer a little bit more, so I'm not dancing all around the circuit. Gap is this time by. So six laps. Two seconds. Ugh. I think that might be a lap old, so just keep pushing. Got Randy Lewis in front, I think. Oh no. A little bit wide there. Just missed the braking. Let's see Ray Hall.
All right, trying to get a run on Lewis here. Get around him before the kink. Be easy to do, I hope. Oh, he's gonna come back on me. What are you doing? That was close. Not able to stay in front of him. Hopefully, Ray Hall gets stuck behind him a couple corners or something. Help me out, Randy. The first gear. Five more laps. That's all I need to do. Pulled out a little bit on Ray Hall that time. And I think maybe he got caught behind Randy Lewis for a second. Just hit all the apexes. Stay away from the walls. Don't spin the car out. Hopefully we'll not see too much traffic or anything for the last few laps. A wide there. It's a fine line between if you touch that grass, the car just really suddenly oversteers. So I'm running a bit wide, but it's so hard to put the car where you want it to in this. Being extra careful through that left-hander, I think just the way you enter that corner, it's been giving me trouble the whole race. Down a first gear here. steering four more laps to go pulling out on Ray Hall so as long as I keep doing this it seems to be working might be stuck behind Randy Lewis as well hopefully that just gives me just enough time to make it through the rest of the race can't believe I'm in second. I mean, I lucked out with a couple things. Rick Mears breaking down, Mario Andretti breaking down. We'll have to see what their mechanical failure was. And then that pit strategy, I think, worked. I think they probably got caught up in those lapped cars, and I was able to basically just avoid that whole mess. Oh my god, so slow through there and just understeering the whole way. No wonder the tires <laughs> aren't really lasting a full stint. Oh, I just saw him there in the mirror. Not gonna let me get away with this easily. Alright, three more laps. Been really lucky to just get clean track here towards the end of the race. I don't have to worry about trying to negotiate around lapped cars. hitting the throttle through there. Oh. All right, come around. Two more laps then. This has definitely been one of the longest feeling races I've ever done in IndyCar 2. Just, I don't think I've ever done a full race around Detroit and uh, for good reason. Even, you know, I did Long Beach and there's just a little less going on at Long Beach, so it's a little bit easier. Surfer's Paradise is a really difficult one, and luckily we don't have to do that this season, but 
and everybody loves that track, but it's pretty brutal in IndyCar 2 with the chicanes. Chicanes are a hard thing <laughs> in IndyCar 2. I can just see Bobby Ray Hall back there. I just got to try to keep this together for the last laps. Should get the white flag this time. Feels like so slow through there, but the car is pretty slatty right now. I just need to make it one more lap here without spinning out or anything. You can see Bobby Ray Hall back there, but he's got to make up maybe a second or two. Come to the line, should get the white flag. There it is, one more lap to go. Fourth gear here. I have a feeling Ray Hall is going to be right on the back of me by the end of this. He's definitely faster as the fuel light comes on and distracts me again. As long as I don't spin or slide or something, I don't think he's going to have a chance to get around me. I'm you sure. <laughs> you better be sure I'm going to be blocking. Oh, we get down to the back stretch. A little bit of a slide there. through the fast kink that's where the race ends very easily if you mess it up got a second gear for the hard corner I'll just roll through don't do anything silly there we go now come through the fast series of left-handers got Ray Hall right in the mirror this is the last really good passing opportunity there get through it get on the accelerator first gear up to second up to third up to fourth for just a second back down to third roll it on through Couple of last corners, all right. Oh my God, we'll come to the line. Second place at Detroit. It feels like a win. It does, <laughs> Unser Jr. I mean, I know I botched the start of the race there, but Unser Jr. was just so much faster. Here comes Ray Hall on by, I'll give him a little wave. <laughs> my God, that's a tiring one. <laughs> that's no joke in IndyCar too in Detroit and it's uh it's only gonna get worse from here there's a couple more of these really tricky street circuits on the season oh my god a little little Michael by oh dab dab goose thank you well done mate excellent result thanks so much it does feel like a win um I know I came second made a few mistakes there but I kept the car in one piece uh despite hitting the walls pretty much every lap getting around the lap traffic was so hard And that was a really unexpected result, but the failures of some of the other cars, um, you know, just helped that out. And again, just maximizing what I can do in a race. That's, I keep doing that. Just keep doing it. Thanks everybody. I appreciate everybody too, helping me out with fuel strategy. And I think everybody was saying the right numbers. So that's nice. <laughs> oh, it is a grind though, isn't it? It is an absolute grind. I'm just rolling around to let the uh, rest of the field finish before we exit. <clears throat> want to make sure everybody finishes the race before we start looking at the results and all that. Little Randy Lewis by. All right. The whole field should have a chance to finish there. Exit out. Oh, we missed the screen. I don't know how that happened. We'll start a little music here though. All right, I'm gonna save the replay. I forgot to do that last time. And we missed the, the finishing screen, which is unfortunate. All right, so let's take a look at the results of this race. Al Unser Jr. wins the race led 71 of the 77 laps. I led two right off the line there. Got around Teo Fabi and, and led the race for a little bit before I, before I spun out. But Ryan Axelson, our driver here, finishes in second. So keeping the podium streak alive. Five races so far this season, five podiums. Can't do much better than that. And I won the Indy 500. I think the season's going absolutely excellent so far. <clears throat> but two wins in a row for Allenser Jr. So he might be starting a little bit of a push here um, in the middle of the season. So we got to make sure we keep on top of that. 
Bobby Ray Hall finishes in third. Michael Andretti finishes in fourth. Emerson Fittipaldi getting a top five. So those two did pretty poorly in qualifying, ended up recovering quite well. So we'll have to see the points here in a second, but it's not going to be this um, major success, but I will have pulled it out a little bit. Teo Fabi from the pole back in six. Ari Leyendijk, Raul Boisel, John Andretti getting a top 10. That's great. The 70 car there. And then Scott Pruitt coming away with 10th. Uh, we'll look further down. Danny Sullivan, Scott Brayton, Derek Daly, AJ Foyt, John Jones. Everybody's still running here. Kevin Kogan, Randy Lewis, Bernard Jourdain, Didier Thais, and um, Guido Daco. I don't know why I forgot his name for a second. We had three retirements and not uh, minor ones either. Rick Mears with a half shaft failure right towards the end of the race. And uh, Mario Andretti with an engine failure just 19 laps in. That's kind of the Andretti luck, I think. <laughs> that seems to always happen to them. And Poncho Carter also with a half shaft issue there after 17 laps. Whew, what a result. All right, we'll save this too, just in case something really bad happens. All right, let's back out. We'll see championship standings and everything. So that's the results of the race again. And here we go. Ah, oh, this looks good. This is looking good for old Ryan Axelson in his rookie season here. So. 82 points out in the lead uh, ahead of Michael Andretti now with 59 points behind. So definitely came away from Detroit here better than I thought I was going to and uh, really, really killing him so far this year. Emerson Fittipaldi back to third. So we've, we've settled the second place dispute. 57 points there to 59 for uh, Michael Andretti. And then Alistair Jr. back in fourth. So Alistair Jr. is coming up. Coming up to points, he's in fourth now, ahead of Danny Sullivan in fifth, who I feel like really hasn't featured that much, but just at uh, Phoenix there, the, the round one. And then we'll look here, Bobby Ray Hall in sixth, Scott Pruitt in seventh position, Rick Mears eighth, Mario Andretti back in ninth, and Teo Fabi bringing up tenth in the points. Just quickly scroll down to the uh, lower positions in points. Of course, top 12 cars get points, so we actually have 24 drivers right now that have scored at least a point this season, which is pretty good. But, yeah, nowhere near won the championship. Trust me, a, a DNF or uh, a few bad results, it's all it's going to take to uh, to not be up front there. But surviving the first of this five rounds up front, which is good. So, that wraps up round number five at Belle Isle. We'll be going to Portland next in Oregon, which is a good track. A little less... Uh, risk of ending a race early there but <clears throat> a good track to to race on a bit more of a natural terrain road course uh which i always enjoy then we'll be going to cleveland i know a lot of folks are looking forward to that then we got two really tricky rounds in a row meadowlands is probably going to be the hardest race of the season building it up to be i think it's going to be uh and then toronto is not going to be much easier afterwards that'll be much similar to belle isle here but we've at least survived one of them and we'll be on to portland next so I appreciate everybody watching. I hope this was fun to watch. Uh, it was a good race. I'm, I'm very satisfied with a, a second place finish there at Detroit. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.